Hey there, folks. My name is Dan Goodman, and I want to welcome you to another rousing edition of our Stormwind Studios succinct held online remote training sessions, or simply shorts, as we like to call them. This is technically the 12th short in the Wireless LAN Essentials series of shorts, focusing on Cisco licensing and some of our wireless capable components. Now, we kind of lumped these two together because this is yet another Cisco infomercial. Uh, we want to make sure that we discuss the licensing options at our disposal, as well as some of the wireless capable components, which is kind of the term I'm using to describe the routers, the switches, the other players in the play, so to speak. Uh, more of a let's give a shout out to the production crew type of thing rather than, hey, let's go through every router, every switch, not a true CCNA routing and switching type thing. The other thing that we're obviously going to focus on is, of course, to make sure that Cisco gets paid for all of their awesomeness, which is a nice way of saying their licensing, if we think about it in that regard. Now, as far as the licensing is concerned, we basically break them down into the major categories. The first one that's definitely the most applicable one to wireless LANs is going to be the controller licenses. Controllers require licenses to monitor and configure the access points on a network basically two types of licenses at our disposal the base license and the adder license the base license is intended to support both the standard and premium software sets it used to be known as the w plus license for those of you guys who have been working with the equipment for a number of years but now it's called the base license uh, it includes datagram transport layer security aka dtls to provide encryption for increased data security it also has support for the Office Extend access points that we've talked about, uh, Enterprise Mesh support, the CapWAP data encryption, and the access points themselves cannot be managed without at least the base license. So in many ways, you can kind of consider it your entry-level licensing option for your controllers. As the name implies, the adder license adds additional capabilities to your controllers. It's added in various combinations, really from the perspective of reaching the maximum number of access points supported. We need to recognize, and if you have to, go back to our earlier shorts talking about the controller capacity, both for clients and the total number of access points. So one thing to recognize there is that the maximum numbers we discussed there are not necessarily the base license. That is if you add all of the adder licenses, this is what you can hope to get from uh, adding those additional licenses to it. So keep in mind that there's a giant asterisk to the, next to those numbers that we've talked about in the earlier shorts. Now the other topic O discussion in the licensing world is going to be the prime infrastructure. This is something that definitely has its, not roots, but kind of has the ability to reach into our wireless networks, but it's kind of its own separate entity, if you will. It also has the base license, which enables use as a management node for your wireless infrastructure. The lifecycle license includes the lifecycle feature set, which basically means it's going to have device configuration management, software image management, basic health and performance monitoring, fault management, troubleshooting, and not network client visibility. And it is going to be based upon the number of managed devices, as most of these licenses are going to be. The assurance feature set is going to include end-to-end -end visibility of application and service performance. You can also manage and aggregate data from multiple Cisco Prime Network Analysis Modules, or NAMS, N-A-M-S. This is also going to be based upon the number of managed NetFlow enable interfaces. So obviously that adds another wrinkle to the fold, if you will. The collector license is going to increase the NetFlow processing limits on the prime infrastructure management load, basically give it more juice to work with. The plug and play gateway supports deployment of a separate gateway for the plug and play feature. This allows devices to call into the gateway to receive their software images as well as their software configurations. Multi-customer is really intended for the service providers out there and other entities that are going to have multiple customers, hence the name multi-customer. Uh, compliance gives you access to regulatory compliance reports based upon any sort of government or industry regulations like HIPAA and Sarbanes-Oxley and all those sorts of things. 
High availability gives us the ability to deploy prime infrastructure in high availability with both a primary and a secondary instance. Now, in the terms of the MSE, the Mobility Services Engine, we have a couple of different options there. The CMX Base, the CMX Advanced, the CMX Upgrade, and the Wireless Intrusion Prevention System. The CMX Base gives us advanced spectrum analysis as well as location tracking for rogue devices, interferers, clients, and tags, and also provides access to the Mobility Services API. The advanced license gives us a partner stream for sending raw RSSI values of RFID tags to partner applications. Basically, it includes a number of kind of uh, not sub features, but sub products, if you will. CMX Connect gives us a visitor Wi-Fi onboarding system uh, platform. The CMX Analytics, the CMX Connectors, all of these give us location and location analytics that can tie into various third-party equipment, application software, whatever it may be. The upgrade license is intended to take the base customers to the advanced license. So if you purchase one, then want to upgrade, you can do that. Uh, you don't necessarily have to buy a brand new thing. You can simply do the upgrade. The intrusion prevention system will leverage the mobility services engine for both detection and mitigation of a wide variety of attacks. Finally, we have the right to use, which is offered with newer products, specifically the controllers, the 3850 series, the 3650, the 5760, the Flex 7500 series, and the 8500 series can all take advantage of this license. This is because Cisco changed a number of things. One of the things they changed is that their licenses are no longer tied to a unique device identifier, the UDI. Uh, it's not tied to a product ID. It's not even tied to a serial number anymore. This allows the enabling of desired access point licenses after the end user license agreement is accepted. Basically, you can use this and then purchase the number of licenses you need at that particular point in time. So let's say you plug in your controller, you fire it up, and it recognizes 50 access points. At that time, you can go ahead and buy the licenses rather than buying it initially and then having it recognize the, the access points. Now, some of the other types of licenses that fall within this category would be the permanent or the base. This is programmed into the controller during the manufacturing process. The adder will is essentially what happens when the access point licenses get activated after accepting the end user license agreement. And then the evaluation is exactly what it sounds like, demo or trial that's good for a period of 90 days. Now, all of this is going to get lumped under the new way that Cisco manages its licenses, which is known as smart licensing. Centralizing the management and simplifying the entire licensing process is something that Cisco has kind of made a point of pride. Smart licensing is intended to make the license registration process faster and more flexible and is actually comprised of three parts. The smart licensing, which is essentially the licenses themselves. The smart account, which is used to create users and groups as well as organize your licenses according to your own business's needs. And then the Cisco Smart Software Manager, CSSM. This is a portal where you can activate and manage all of your Cisco licenses. There's an on-premise version uh, for security sensitive customers and also a, a remote version that's accessible via any web browser. This will eventually completely replace uh, the Cisco License Manager for those of you guys who are more familiar with that tool. Moving on from the licensing part of things, we just want to take a minute, a minute here to kind of recognize the wireless capable components. Once again, the other players that are involved in most of our wireless networking. The Cisco UCS E series servers. Among other things, this equipment has servers with the virtual wireless LAN controller installable on them. Those virtual wireless LAN controllers have the ability to support up to 200 access points and 3,000 clients while providing 802.11n or AC with a maximum of 500 megabit per second throughput. There's also the Cisco Integrated Services Router, the ISR series. ISR is a type of network architecture that is used to guarantee network quality of service. 
This particular series offers edge networking capabilities, reliable, secure branch office connectivity, cloud-based configuration and monitoring through Cisco DNA Center, as well as the Cisco SD-WAN, and we also get mobile connectivity. The 4000 series, for example, supports a variety of UCS integrations and combinations, like the virtual wireless LAN controllers we just discussed. Now, for the record, other Cisco training is gonna make mention of the 2900 and the 3900 ISR. Uh, the wireless service module and the 7900 series of wireless IP phones, all of those items have reached their end of life. In fact, when I was going through the training myself, I said, wait a minute, those are no longer, and sure enough, they've reached their end of life. So just in case you come across them and you're thinking, hey, why don't we talk about them? Because they're scheduled for removal uh, <laughs> sooner rather than later. All right, folks, that is all that we had here for our 12th short. Thanks for watching our short on Wireless LAN Essentials. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you are notified of these shorts shortly after they become available. Take care.